I was accused of writing it on a bit of paper and keeping it in the same compartment with the card. Um, I was accused of keeping it on my home screen, on my phone. All of these ridiculous scenarios that no one would ever do, uh, I was accused of. And, and to be to suddenly feel like you're being blamed for this. And that's exactly what the bank said. It's your fault. They've used the pin. You must have written it down. Hello and you're welcome to The Big Tech Show with me, Adrian Weckler, in association with Square. Square can help you look after your business needs, from payments to menu management and online ordering. Visit square.com for more. This week we're looking back at one of the most popular episodes of The Big Tech Show in recent months, getting your card or phone scammed. So here once again is my conversation with Charlotte Morgan, whose story went viral around the world when thieves used her phone to get at her bank card's PIN number, leaving her thousands of pounds out of pocket. Charlotte told us how to stop the same thing happening to you. Charlotte Morgan, you're welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Adrian. Hello. Charlotte, um, you caused an international stir with what happened to you one day when you went into a gym with your bag. Tell us what happened. Yeah, quite. Um, well, I had just finished my, my shift um, and I decided to go to my gym. And uh, as you do, I went downstairs, locked my belongings uh, in the locker as usual. Um, I was with a colleague uh, on the day. Um, sorry, can I start that again? I've missed out a crucial bit. Yeah, no, no, sorry. sure. You're grand. I, I, I'll start. I'll, I'll ask you the question again. Sorry, I'll ask you on, the question go. again. Sorry, I'm being a bit too, I'm being a little bit too. Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. I just, I've tried to put all this to the back of my mind and I'm racing. Yeah, no, no, There's no, a no, crucial no. bit of information there. So yeah, no worries. I, I'll, 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 I'll start. To, I'll ask you the question again. Okay. So, um, so, so anyway, yeah. So Charlotte, you, um, something kind of extraordinary happened to you one day when you went in as usual to your gym. Tell us what happened. Yeah, so I'd uh, finished my, my shift, went to my uh, local gym uh, with a colleague. Uh, I had just been offered a job actually. So uh, I wanted to discuss that through with my colleagues. So we were about to spend probably longer in the gym than we normally would, uh, which turned out to be unfortunate. But uh, when we arrived at the gym, uh, the security barriers, which uh, normally activate when members scan their membership cards, uh, weren't working. Um, so we were told by the staff uh, to just put our names down on a bit of paper and they'd let us through. And uh, no one no one really checked those, those names before we were let through. No one even looked at them. Um, but uh, we thought it was unusual, but um, didn't really think anything of it. And so uh, I went down locked my belongings away as as you do uh, I decided because I'd be speaking to my colleague uh, throughout our workout that I wouldn't need my phone uh, I normally have it with me for the music but uh, that day sadly I locked it uh, away in my locker along with what kind of phone was it it was uh, an iPhone 13 Pro which I'd just Ooh. a month ago treated myself to after clinging Ooh. on to a smashed up old one for about 6 years um so I'm paying off that for another 2 years as you'll find Okay well let's not ruin the surprise so so okay, then what yes, happened Yes So uh, I began a workout um I was up in the gym with a colleague uh for about an hour and a half and talking away, uh, little did I know in the meantime what was going on, but I'll come to that in a second. Anyway, mm -hmm. I finished my workout, returned to the locker uh, to get my, my belongings. And uh, the locker not only didn't have any padlock on, but was empty when I opened it. And obviously the immediate thought is, oh, I must have mistaken what locker I'd used. But I was convinced that that was the one. So I, I started checking the lockers all around it um, and there was just no sign of any of my belongings. And I, I obviously panicked at that moment, but thought, OK, well, perhaps someone mistake, mistook my locker for theirs and had it broken open and my stuff is now in reception. I was trying to come up with an idea in my head as to why my as belongings do. are there. As you do, you just, you just think, oh no, surely there's some sort of explanation. Yeah. Um, so I went up to a reception and asked 
uh, if my belongings had been handed in for whatever reason. And as I went up the stairs, there were uh, two other women standing there and one of them, well, one of them looked extremely upset and the other one said to me, oh no, not you as well. Oh. Uh, that's when my heart really sank. I thought, oh my gosh, okay, it's beginning to sink in what's happened here. And uh, we went back down to the locker room uh, just so I could show her which one I had. And uh, we were all frantically looking around. There was no sign of any of our belongings. So what had happened during my workout is that someone, I don't know how they got in, uh, but someone had broken into our lockers um, while we were having our workout and uh, took all of our things and in the meantime went uh, on a bit of a spending spree. Um, so what was taken from exactly from your, your workshop? So, so it was my my new iPhone uh, mm -hmm. was taken. Uh, I had, you know, clothing, shoes, etc. that I changed mm -hmm. out of, um, you know, makeup, which I'm sure what many women will uh, <laughs> sympathize with me on that one. Um, I had headphones in there, which I don't, which I normally have with me. But as I said, I was chatting to a colleague throughout my workout, so I didn't really need them. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I had my bank card in there as well. Uh, and the next thing you know that you start seeing these charges being racked up. Yeah, so immediately I'm in a sudden state of panic because not only was my phone and bank card and everything else in my bag, but also my flat keys as well. So it's, you know, this is in the evening, late in the evening, um, approaching 10 p.m. It's dark. I've got suddenly nowhere to stay that night no one to call because I don't have my phone or any numbers and no one remembers numbers off the top of the head anymore. Hmm. And also I have no means to pay for any accommodation such as a hotel or to travel to somewhere that, you know, with to stay with someone that I know. So I, I'm a really independent person and all of my friends will, will know that. And that was a really vulnerable moment for me because I suddenly felt like every option was just completely taken away from me. And I was in, complete shock um so uh you just try and think in your head right what do i need to do in order and you know which which one do i prioritize first so obviously the first phone call we made uh just automatically was was the police because i i had no idea that in that time someone would manage to have spent any money in that time because i thought well i haven't been in the gym long you know just call the police. It, it was my initial instinct. So we called the this police. This is within an hour, an hour and a half of you having left the stuff there. Yes. Yes, yeah. correct. Um, so, but I, in fact, they did have time to spend money. They did. They acted extremely quickly. Um, so after calling the police, I called my bank and to cancel my cards, obviously. We go through various security procedures uh, before we can even get to that stage, which is obviously frustrating because every second counts um but in my head in the back of my mind I'm thinking it's fine it's fine you're calling them straight away you've acted soon enough there's no way that they could have spent any money by now it's late in the night anyway but uh when I spoke to the the gentleman on the phone he then starts going through all of the transactions that have left my account in those 90 minutes um which I mean, I was adding it up in my head and I thought, gosh, that's that's everything. There's 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 nothing left. And I thought, hang on a second. There's no way that they could have spent that much because in my bank account connected to my bank card. I keep quite a limited amount in there. Just, you know, I transfer as much as I can for mm -hmm. to save as much as I can. So I thought, how, how have they managed to spend all that money when there wasn't even that amount in there? And what and have they spent? What kind of things have they been buying? So they first went to uh, a shopping centre near where I work uh, and they went to an Apple store. Ooh. Uh, uh -oh. Which, yeah, you can imagine, you know. Yeah, there's not, not much Not talking cheap in pennies there. here, exactly. Uh, and they, they'd they spent many thousands. So the, they actually went to two Apple stores. This was the first. Um, the first Apple store, uh, They I don't know what they bought and I don't want to look up the amounts because it'll only depress me. Um, but I imagine that's some sort of phone or computer. And yeah. uh, they'd spent uh, around £3,000 uh, in the first store alone. 
3,000. Yeah, there was, each transaction was over a thousand pounds. Um, there were two, oh there was one that was almost 1,200 pounds, one that was around 950. Um, so yeah, altogether it was, it was around 3,000 pounds that they'd spent in the first Apple store. Uh, and, th and they still weren't finished. Um, after that, they went to Regent Street. And for anyone who isn't that familiar with London, uh, might be familiar with the game Monopoly. It's right next to Mayfair. So you're talking very expensive stalls uh, in this area. And uh, another Apple store they found. Uh, and they spent uh, another uh, £1,050 in there. Um and they continued, you know, they must have had quite a few shopping bags at this point, but uh, they weren't finished. The shops were still open. Meanwhile, I was carrying on with my workout and they went to a store called Selfridges, which I'm sure many people will recognize the name of. And it's an extremely expensive store. I've never bought anything from there before. I can only dream of buying things from there, really. And uh, yes, they decided to spend another just under a thousand pounds there as well. Um, at that moment, in the background, an, a, a security issue had been flagged up on my account, for some reason only in that Selfridges store. And what happens then is the bank sends a, a passcode to your phone to verify the purchase. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if they have your phone, then they confirm that they are you, essentially. And, and within three minutes of them attempting it the first time and it actually going through. Uh, yeah, everything everything had been passed. They passed all the security checks. So that is the one big question that a lot of people who will have followed your story will have asked, how on earth, first of all, were they not challenged by the system when they were using all these cards? Or I presume they were using the physical card or were they, they weren't using the phone itself. They were using the card, right? I had, to, I had assumed that they'd somehow managed to bypass my facial recognition or my passcode. I've, I've no idea how they would do that, but because yeah. Apple Pay was on my phone and that has unlimited uh, expenditure, you can spend as much as you want on Apple yes. Pay, there's no limit. So in my head, I thought, okay, hacking a phone is obviously difficult, but that's more believable than them knowing my bank card PIN, because there's no yes, way that yes. they would know that even I barely know my bank card pin, so I'd be very impressed if they did. Um, so, but no, my bank was adamant when I spoke to them, they were absolutely adamant that these people had used the pin uh, itself. That it was a card. pin verified transaction in each time. Yes. So they had, what the bank was saying is that they had walked in as mm -hmm. you put the card into the machine and tapped out the four number pin card and that was the verification that was required. Exactly and, and naturally I'm so frustrated at this point because there is no way that they could have known my pin I thought that's impossible and the bank you, agreed. You don't write your pin on a piece of paper or anything in your <laughs> wallet or anything like that right? No, no it's funny you should say that Adrian because that's exactly what I was accused of doing by the bank. Uh, I was accused of writing it on the card itself at one point uh, I was accused of writing it on a bit of paper and keeping it in the same compartment with the card. Um, I was accused of keeping it on my home screen, on my phone. All of these ridiculous scenarios that no one would ever do, uh, I was accused of. And, and to be, to suddenly feel like you're being blamed for this. And that's exactly what the bank said. It's your fault. They've used the pin. You must have written it down. You know, they're telling me under, you know, it's very clear that it's all your fault. And suddenly you feel like the criminal. And mm. that's so frustrating because suddenly I'm having to prove my innocence that I've not been negligent at all with my with my security details. And to have my bank, who was supposed to be looking after my money, telling me that I had been, uh, was incredibly frustrating, knowing that someone was laughing, you know, their way all yeah. the way to the Apple store and the and the Selfridges store, you know, with, with your hard-earned money. And and that was the basis on which the bank denied initially giving me my money, any money back. I was, I was, uh, they'd spent just under £9,000 in total. Some of the transactions were still pending. They'd managed to stop some of the later transactions, but they had managed to spend just shy of £5,000. And I was told uh, that it was all my fault and I would not be getting this money back. 
Now, we can talk about the people who did this because there are separate processes involved there that presumably the stores would have CCTV and when alerted could go and check those and, and there are other things. But from your perspective, in trying to get to the bottom of A, the bank dealing with this in a responsible way and dealing with you like a, you know, a responsible citizen and, and treating you with respect. And then also in terms of how this whole thing happened, eventually your story went viral. A lot of people will have seen your story uh, online. And eventually the bank Santander did come back to you with a better response. Did you ever find out how it was that they managed to bypass the security? Uh, yes, you're right about a lot of people having seen the story. And at that point, I I don't want people discussing my finances. I never wanted that. But at that point, I'd completely run out of options. Um, you know, the police weren't really acting the, uh, because they were telling me there was no camera footage of the actual theft itself in the gym. So any subsequent activity couldn't be investigated. Uh, I was, you know, refused help from my bank from getting the money back. And also the gym were just saying, we're not responsible for any thefts from lockers. So I just, everyone was turning their back on me. And I just felt like if one person can relate to what I've been through, then, you know, amazing. Mm. And, and never did I expect it to get shared as far and wide as it did. But um, yes, so in terms of finding out how it was actually done, I, in the process of it being shared quite far and wide, um, a lot of people did get in touch, some with, you know, theories that they guessed, um, but some had, uh, you know, a professional background in this sort of area. One was, uh, I wouldn't say, he wouldn't say which bank anyway, but um, I wouldn't say which bank, but he was a UK fraud investigator. And he, you could tell he knew a lot about this sort of thing. And he gave me a scenario which is the only scenario that I could really understand. Um, he gave me a scenario in, you know, the way he thinks it might have happened. And it, basically, it's very simple. I was thinking, right, it must be, you know, they've hacked facial recognition or they've, you know, how have they managed to do this? They've, they've got Which is very, very difficult to do on an iPhone. I mean, you can yeah. sort of do it sometimes on some Android phones and they admit yeah. when you set it up. You I had all these theories going through my head. Yeah, that about like, is this someone in Apple that's helped them? And, and that's not, you know, that's not, not accusing anyone in Apple. Do you have an evil off. twin somewhere that's stalking you? Yeah. <laughs> that's the only, yeah, it's the only scenario. Hmm. You start to go mad trying to think of all these theories and then suddenly it clicked and what this man said made sense. So obviously I don't want to, you know, reveal ways in how to sure. do this because if it gets into the wrong hands you know if the information gets into the wrong hands then they can do more harm than good however i think some of our important. listeners are not that trustworthy no I... as well. <laughs> go on but go ahead no yeah. comment no comment um i but i think it's really important that people understand how this works in order to stop it from happening in the first place so yes so the theory that i that seems most likely is that mm -hmm. my phone was basically irrelevant to them what was relevant to them was the SIM card itself. So it's likely that they'd taken the SIM card from my phone, put it in a phone of their own. Suddenly, facial recognition, passcodes, you know, that's not a problem anymore. You have access to that person's number. You are essentially that person when the bank sends you any security details to confirm that you are that person. All goes through the phone. So it's quite easy. And you then, if they have the bank card as well, which in my case, sadly, they did, it's it's actually a, a quite a quick process to go through the forgotten your details process. So you need some details from the card. You go online, you've forgotten your username, and it kind of goes from there. So you, and it, and it all stems back from having access to that mobile number because that's at the end of the day, that's the sort of the last sign of uh, the last step of security, if you like. Um, uh, and, and pin aren't sim cards usually protected by pins uh they used to be not so much now no so i wasn't aware of this actually so years ago you wouldn't be able to just put a sim into a new phone you'd have to you know get it mm. unlocked and, and go through a quite a long process so to make it easier they started uh, making pins uh, unlocked so any sim card can be put into any phone but you know mm -hmm. to, a, to an extent uh there is a feature which i've now added onto my phone uh, whereby you can actually lock your SIM card, which has been a lifesaver. I mean, so many people have been in touch with with advice mm. that I, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware of at all. 
Um, I, saw you, I saw you tweet this out. This is a very interesting and very potentially valuable piece of advice. It's in settings, isn't it? Yes, yes. So, um, so I'm going to go through it now, actually, if I... If I, if I yeah, I think I it's settings. And I think you go into, on an iPhone, it's settings. And I think then it's mobile data. That's and in it. that menu, yes. you, there is actually an on-off toggle switch for your SIM pin. There is absolutely. It's slightly different for Android, but it's a very similar process. Um, mm. And that basically, whenever they take your SIM card out then and put it into another phone, suddenly they hit a big security wall and they can't really get past. So if anyone rings yeah. your phone when it's in another phone, it won't work, uh, which which would have stopped yeah. this all from happening. Another part of this, uh, which meant that they had access to my bank card pin, um, lies within the banking app itself. So within, I'm with Santander, but it's not just Santander that has this feature. Uh, you log into uh, the mobile banking app. So once they'd reset all my details, they had their own account. Um, and there's literally a, a, a part in that app where it says show pin. So you can reveal the, the pin number. So then they're not limited to any, any particular amount. You know, not only are they in my banking app to transfer from my savings account to my current account, which is how they managed to spend the amount that they did, they also have access to my PIN so they can use their card as freely as, or my card as freely as, as they wanted to. I mean, it's terrifying, but it's also incredibly educational what, what you're telling us uh, here today. There are two things I want to wrap this up on. First of all, the bank did actually come and... Uh, they pretty much put their hands up after there'd been a, a lot of publicity, but they admitted that actually they shouldn't have dealt with you uh, in the patronizing way that they had. And, and um, did you get your money refunded? I did, thankfully. It was a, such a stressful week. I, I was without the money for, well, it was a full week before they eventually said they would give me the money back. But obviously then you've got this long process of waiting for your new details to arrive in order to, and until I saw it in my account, I was still you know in doubt um but yes thankfully i do now have my money back and uh they did actually uh compensate me as well for 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 that week um and all the trouble uh that i the struggle that i went through um yeah and yeah yeah and also um, they, they 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 said they they were also open to any information that i'd received any advice so I actually put forward the advice about the pin within the app and whether that's a feature that they might want to reconsider um, mm. or just make it optional because the majority of people I've spoken to had no idea that their pin was in their mobile banking app. And when I asked them if they'd like that to stay, they said no, obviously. Mm. Some excellent advice. Lastly, you did say that you, were, uh, you had bought your iPhone 13 Pro. You're currently paying for that in installments, are you? I am. I am. In fact, the installment went out this morning and uh, I have I've worked out. I have another I think it's something like 21 months left oh, to pay. God. Um, so okay. that's so frustrating because someone somewhere has this iPhone mm. that I'm paying for. That, you know, that, that you're paying for. Now, I, I believe uh, I stand to be corrected that the next time you buy one, I think if you take Apple Care out, which is around 100 quid, 150 quid, something like that. I think that actually covers theft and loss as well. Yeah, I think. that's, that's also sure. very good advice, Adrian, yes. <laughs> I know. Uh, after the event. Uh, Charlotte Morgan, thank you very much for joining us today on The Big Tech Show, for explaining that um, absolutely fascinating story, brilliantly told, and the very, very best of luck in the future. A pleasure, and um, thank you for giving this a, a platform as well. And that's all we have time for this week from The Big Tech Show. For me, Adrian Weckler, thanks very much to Tabitha Monaghan and to Gavin Hennessy on sound and to you for listening. And we will talk to you at the same time next week. Bye-bye.